Welcome to Douglas County News Exchange. I'm your host, Lena Hardy. For those of you who might have already drifted away from your resolution to get in shape, it's not too late to get back on the wagon. Cobb and Douglas Public Health have joined the One Billion Steps Challenge and are encouraging everyone in Douglas County to participate. Here is Sabrina Mallet with Cobb and Douglas Public Health to tell you more. Well, the program is called the One Billion Steps Challenge. It's a national initiative um, sponsored by the American Public Health Association. Um, they created this program as an initiative that leads up to National Public Health Week, which is the first week of April. Um, and it's a way to get the nation moving more. Um, we think it's a way to build awareness of the need to move more. And also we think of it as a way to build awareness for the need for more walkable communities. We have participated in the Walk Georgia Initiative um, sponsored through UGA and um, Extension. Um, that had some success and that program on a state level is kind of being called back a little. Um, not to say that we won't do it this year also, but um, we just saw this as another way to get the community moving. It's hard sometimes to exercise by yourself and some people like the idea of a challenge. Um, we seem to be a more and more competitive nation. <laughs> and so the idea of a challenge does help get people motivated to move more. So basically anyone can participate. The great thing about this program is that it makes it easy to participate. Um, American Public Health Association has partnered with an app called Strike Kick. And through that app, you can easily track your movement via any of these type of fitness um, technologies. Um, for instance, I track it through my Fitbit. Um, you can track it through your iPhone or your Android phone. And so it makes it very easy to participate. And um, there's a website, www.nphw.com. Um, and you basically go to the link that says One Billion Steps Challenge, and you say, let's get started. Um, and basically it takes you to the website and you can link yourself in. So you put in all your information, you choose a team that you'd like to get engaged with, and you can join that team easily and connect your mobile technology and get going. So the program started the 1st of January, so it's from January 1st through April 8th. And so anybody can join at any point. Um, even kids, if they have iPhones, and many, many do nowadays, um, they can also join. The families can join. Um, we do have a Live Healthy Douglas team that we're encouraging people to join um, so that we can get on the leaderboard. Uh, but, you know, if organizations or groups or community organizations would like to create their own teams, they can do so also. Sticking with the health theme, the Douglas County School System started a school-based health clinic based out of Burnett Elementary School several years ago. At the time, it was only open to students who attended the school and their siblings. The program has been so popular and successful, it has been expanded to all of the schools in the county, siblings of those students and other various qualifying groups. Here is a public service announcement about the clinic. The Family Health Center at Douglas County is housed in the Burnett Elementary School building located at 8277 Connolly Drive. The center provides a full range of health care services to help students avoid health-related absences and receive support to succeed in the classroom. The Family Health Center serves all students of the Douglas County School System, siblings of all students up to the age of 19, and their preschool age siblings beginning at age 3. The center also serves homeless students across the district, all school staff and all children of school staff. The center accepts insurance and charges parents for services based on a sliding scale. Services provided include primary care, immunizations, lab services, physicals, chronic disease management, health education, nutrition counseling, and behavioral health. 
The space for the health center includes four exam rooms, a reception area, locked storage, and wheelchair accessibility. The clinic will open Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Fridays when school is in session, 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. For more information or to make an appointment, call 770-651-CARE or 2273 or email renee.davis at douglas.k12.ga.us. Here are some news you might want to know about. Alexander High School choral students enjoyed a once-in-a-lifetime tour of Ireland from December 26 to January 3rd. The students performed three concerts of diverse music, including selections by composer and conductor Dr. Tim Sharp, who toured with the choir and served as guest conductor. The first of three concerts was in Tipperary, the second outside of Waterford, and the final concert was at Christ Church in Dublin. This is truly an experience they will never forget. The Douglasville Convention and Visitors Bureau website received a facelift. Located at visitdouglasville.com, the new look is easy to navigate and full of useful information. Make sure you take a moment to check out their beautiful new look. It is apparent that jobs of the future will be science and technology based. It is also apparent that the students of our local schools will be ready. This is evident more than anywhere else at the yearly science and engineering fair. We were there to see the creative displays and here are some of them for you to enjoy. So this is my marble coaster. It measures the, or counts the effect of how different objects of different mass, like a large and smaller marble, uh, has effects on a different track, and which one would be faster and which one would be slower. My initial hypothesis was that the larger marble, this one right here, if you can see it, would be faster because it was heavier, and the effect of gravity on drag would drag it down and be faster than the smaller marble. But every time I tested the larger marble, it would always be slightly slower than the smaller marble. I found out this because larger marbles have a larger mass, like if you pick up a bowling ball next to a tennis ball. So when you put the smaller marble down, it has honestly no re resistance against it. Instead of the larger marble where you'd always have to coax it down to the end of the track. So, Instead of the larger marble being faster, I found out the smaller marble would always be faster to have a slightly less, slightly less time than the larger marble. Hi, my name's Avery Timmons, and my project today is taking the S out of SAT, and what I wanted to look into was the effects of women's menstrual cycles on their academic achievement on college entrance exams. So the purpose of my project was to find out that during the different phases of your menstrual cycle, which let me let you look at a little graph over here. So there are four phases of your menstrual cycle. There's week one, which is when you're usually bleeding. And then there's week two and three, which hormones are pretty high. And so you're academically really successful and you're highly motivated to do things. Often you know as this for like when you should be making babies. <laughs> week four is when you're often about to start your menstrual cycle, so it's called the premenstrual phase. And this is when you start feeling symptoms of like fatigue, you get tired, you feel like you should just take a nap or not even go to school. So what I did was I had over 100 females at my high school who were in high achieving females in AP classes. They took a mock exam of the SAT, which was 20 questions, and it was part reading and part math. Then I had them do a questionnaire on their menstrual cycle characteristics. And that was, that was to be able to have me calculate when they're on their face. So like whether they were about to start menstruating, when they were menstruating, or when they were like supposed to be most successful on their test. I then took those results and combined them into different groups. And what I have here on this chart is that this first line right here of the combined early follicular and late luteal is when they were menstruating or about to start their menstrual cycle and females had a combined score of 9.58 out of 19 points they could score. Then when you compare it to the combined late follicular or early luteal which is when they're supposed to perform really well they scored 11.08 
points out of 19. That's a 1.5 score difference. Using the statistics I have from AB Stats, I was able to determine the significance of my results. From that, I used a, a one-tailed unpaired t-test, and what I was supposed to find was a significant value would be P equaling 0.05. When I did my significance test, I got 0.012, which is extremely significant. So from that, I concluded that females actually do suffer when they're on their, when they're menstruating or bleeding, or when they're about to start their menstrual cycle. And then you're more successful on those weeks two and three when you're like ovulating and your hormones are high. I really hope to like further this and help females with migraines and just help us be more successful because I believe we can be. My project is the Deepalutinator. Um, I love the ocean and everything. Um, when I went to Jekyll um, a, few, a year or two ago, there was a lot of trash in the water. And so um, I was thinking about that when we were researching what project we would do. And so um, I wanted to find a way to clean up, ha to help clean up all the um, trash in the ocean. So I had two different designs. So the first one was just um, the motor having to be waterproof and then everything going down through it. And then as I was building um, during my second, uh, we were doing research on how to um, filter out, I was going to do trash and oil. But then when we did research, we were um, finding out that oil was going to be, it took hours to filter through. We decided not to do oil and just to do trash. And so the pump here, it pulls in water from the long, longer tube and then it spits it out through this tube and then it goes through the filters. There's two different filters because there's um, different types of trash. There's bigger trash and smaller trash. So the bigger trash would get caught in the first filter and the smaller trash would get caught in the second filter. The first filter is just one layer of filtering and then the um, second filter is two layers of filtering. And so all the trash will get out and even the first one caught smaller pieces of trash. There's a piece of foam that's on, it, on the side of this. It makes it float to a certain level in the water, just about below, right at water level, um, but below it. And um, that made a total difference because some of the trash went to the bottom. Some of it was at the top. So that made a difference. So you could get it at the top and then it could get it at the bottom. Well, my project was pretty much to build a Google Assistant, but using, well, an AI really, the, using cheaper materials. And as long as you already have a microphone, speaker, mouse and keyboard, and HDMI cable, all you need to do is build the main piece of the project, which is the little Raspberry Pi, which is right in there. And the nice thing is that it actually works. And just to clarify, I did all this legally. I became an official de a developer for both Amazon, uh, who I don't exactly like anymore, um, and Google. The way you make this work is that you just ask it, okay, or you just say, okay, or hey, Google, and then ask it a question. Like, okay, Google, what is two plus two? The answer is four. As long as you're not asking a question that requires it to predict the future, access a video on the internet, or access an app, it will work perfectly, as long as it can hear you. It's honestly really simple. The sad thing is that because I'm using the Google, because I'm, a, because I'm having to use the Google's uh, source code, uh, I had to become a, well, as I said, a registered developer for Google, so I can do this legally. And because I'm, well, because that happened, I had to use their code. But otherwise, all the code that went into it is mine. The Heather House is a residential home that has converted into a safe place for women to go to recover from drugs and alcohol addiction. 
It recently held an open house to show off their cozy facility, and we talked to the founder to find out the story behind the Heather House. This is the Heather House, and the Heather House was designed for women who are really want to get clean and sober, uh, to give them a safe environment, to learn how to live life without alcohol or drugs. The house is run basically by the women who live in the house. Membership into the house is done by a vote, an interview and a vote by the other ladies in the house. If they are able to uh, become a member, then they're accepted in and they pay a weekly membership fee. Certain conditions have to be met in order to be a member, which is stay clean and sober, do your housework, get a job, or be in full-time treatment, or be in college, or volunteer full-time. I lived in a home real similar to this 13 years ago, so I was inspired to start something here in Douglas County because I believe that the sober living home I lived in helped me become clean and sober today. The Heather House is actually named after um, a young lady named Heather, and Heather has struggled with addiction for 10 years. Um, she still today struggles. She has been able to put together 10 months clean time now, and we're super proud of that, but her living environment was not safe for her. So the home was designed for women just like Heather, who want to get clean and sober, but need an extra help. One of the main reasons that women would want to live here is it gives them a safe environment to learn how to be clean and sober with other women who are doing the same thing. Many times, relationships are broken through addiction. Um, friendships are not always the best for the girls any longer, and they need to develop new friendships with people in recovery and people who are staying clean and sober. So the girls, uh, as part of their membership, they have to go to at least four meetings, outside recovery meetings, out of the house a week. And that gives them an opportunity to meet other people in recovery and stay grounded in their own recovery. We have a strong relationship with the recovered community, uh, with AA and CMA, and um, also with the court systems. People can get more information by going to our Facebook page, which is The Heather House. Um, they can also email us at heatherhousedouglas at gmail.com, or they can call my office at 678-903-3903. That's our show for this month. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out all of our programming on DCTV 23. You can find us on Comcast Channel 23, AT&T UVerse Channel 99, and online at DCTV23.com. We end our show with the monthly birthday celebration for seniors at Woody Fight Senior Center. See you next time. Okay, it's January 2018, how about that? Yay. And we have a whole lot of January babies here, and I want to tell you happy birthday, and I have somebody else here who wants to tell you happy birthday. Our chairperson, Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones, and she comes to wish you a happy birthday too. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Happy New Year's. It's, it's so exciting to be born in January. The weather is cold outside, lots of hot chocolate. And also, most importantly, if we have any Bulldog fans in the house, yeah. go Bulldogs. Georgia Bulldogs. Woo! All right, I'll let Miss Sharon start this celebration. But again, happy birthday to you. And many, many more. Thank you. There we go. Okay, you know we do this on a monthly basis. The first Friday of every month, we celebrate all of our members who have birthdays in that particular month. I'm gonna be coming around and interviewing everybody. I need your name. If you wanna tell me your age, you can, but you don't have to. But something that we have found very interesting in each one of our parties is to find out where you were born. And we, I think in every party that we've had, it's been an international thing. We've had people from, from London. We've had people from uh, 
the Caribbean. So I'd like to know where you were born. Okay, so we're going to be coming around. I first off, though, want to thank the folks from Hightower Funeral Home. Every month they come and supply our cake so that we can have a real party here. So let's give them a hand. So here we go. We're going to start filming now. So, And here's our first one. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm Debbie Cobb. I was born and raised in Atlanta. Oh, I'm 64. I will be. 64. She's younger than I am, so. And I, I see you go have dogs. your. You, go yeah, dogs. you got. Okay, go dogs. She, go she's dogs. dressed That's appropriately. Right. Go dogs. Happy birthday. Thank you. Appreciate okay, it. Okay, and you, sir? William Reed, uh, New Jersey. All right. Where, where in New Jersey? Uh, Trenton. Okay, all right. So, you want to tell us your age or not? 80 in January 20th. All right. All right. Well, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. You're the birthday person. Bar he is too. Barbara Swain, um, born in Fort Valley, Georgia, raised in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm 69. All Happy right. Happy birthday. <laughs> All right. I didn't think you were going to talk to me. <laughs> Would I ever ignore you? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm Sam Swain. I'm, uh, I was born in Dallas, Texas, in Oak Cliff in Dallas. And I'm 77, and I never thought I'd be married to somebody 69 years old, but that seemed like an old person to be married to, doesn't it? No, Sam, come on now. <laughs> Sam is one of my good buddies in one of the art classes, so. Happy birthday, okay, Sam. Happy birthday, Sam. This lady is known as Lil Barb. <laughs> Lil Barb. I'm Barb Stachinsky, born and raised in Motown, Detroit, Michigan. Yes. And I'll be 73. Very good, happy and happy birthday. birthday. Thank you. Okay. I'm Dale Roberts, and I was born in South Fulton County. Can't you tell by my voice? Yes. <laughs> and I've been coming here since it opened, and I love it. All right. We love her, too. Well, happy birthday. Thank you. She also takes a lot of pictures for different events that we have here, yes. so we really appreciate her. All right, and get around the balloons here. Oh, everybody looks Audrey so Audrey Long, Let's born in Appleton, Georgia, the granite capital of the world. And um, the 78th this month. Oh, Very right. good. Happy birthday. Very Happy good. Birthday. <laughs> Are you going to tell me or not? Yes, I will. I'm Shirley Kelly from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I'm 76. All right. All right. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Good morning. I'm Brenda Coffey Cooper. I was born in a little town called Beulah in Mississippi. Yeah. I was raised in St. Louis, Missouri. And I found my way to Georgia, and I'm 63. Okay, happy well, birthday. happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hi, I'm Janice Wallace. I was born in Augusta, Georgia, and lived in Marietta just about all my life. And um, I will be 72. All right. Happy birthday. Well, happy birthday. I was stationed in Augusta, Georgia when I was in Ireland. I'm Susan Ingram, born and raised in Georgia, born in Crawford Long Hospital in Atlanta, and lived in Douglas for 45 years. Oh, wow. wow. Can you tell us your age? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. We won't ask again. Okay. okay. Happy birthday. <laughs> My name's Marie Weehunt. Uh, I was born in Atlanta. I've uh, lived in Douglasville since 1980. Mm -hmm. And I'll be 80. All okay. right. Well, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy 80th birthday, birthday here. He's got the camera on you. All right. I'm Bob Gruber. Uh, a long time ago, I originated in Drosburg, Pennsylvania, which is a, a suburb of Pittsburgh. And uh, Saturday of next week, I will be 92. Wow. wow. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Millie McCready. And I was born in Mitchell, South Dakota. Oh, wow. And I'm 88. Oh, oh wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> yes. I like this. She said, I'm clapping for my birthday. <laughs> I do right. know who this lady is. Yes. Uh, my name is Christine Dixon, 
And I was born in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Yes. I've worked in Virginia for 40 years, and I've been retired here for 11 years. And if the good Lord blesses me, on January 24th, I'll be 74 years old. All right. Wow. Happy All birthday. Right. You look Thank amazing. You. All right. Give me your name. <laughs> <laughs> She's so cute. Uh, Karen Smith. Yes, ma'am. Your birthday. And, when, yeah, birthday. and my birthday is January the 26th. And where were you born? I was born in um, Maricus, Georgia. Okay. It's about a three hour drive from here. Oh, Suffolk yeah. County. Yeah. But okay. I've been here about 40 years. Oh, okay. right. Yes. So you're this Douglas County. Yes. Okay. I'm County. Yes. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. I need your name. Elizabeth Satterfield. Okay. And when, when is your birthday? Today. All Ooh. right. We actually have a, a birthday yes. on the birthday party day. Yes. Okay. You going to tell me your age? 75. All right. Very good. Okay. And where were you born? I was born in Portsmouth, Virginia. What's Okay. So. Okay. Did I miss anybody? Hello. I'm hey. Ruby Foster. My birthday is uh, January 23rd, and I'll be 69. And I was born in Paulding County, Dallas, Georgia. Oh, okay. Right. Happy birthday. Apparently, there were a lot of Georgia births here in the month yes. of January. Uh, from what I'm hearing, very few of, of y'all. We did have some Detroit, some Pennsylvania, <laughs> North Carolina. But no international, which really, that's a first for that's us. That's the first for us. That's the first for us. <laughs> but we want to wish each and every one of you a very, very happy new, new Year and a very blessed birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you, and many more. Okay, I had just, I had just said that with, for the first time we didn't have an international birthday, but now I find out we do. So, and what is your name? My name is Violet. Okay, and what, what day is your birthday? January 15th, 1948. Okay, <laughs> we can calculate your age from that. <laughs> and where were you born? I was born in the Virgin Islands. All right. <laughs> okay, well, we're wishing you a very happy, merry birthday. Thank you very much. Okay. Now